Hello and welcome back. And that's right, it's the start of 2025. And I think a number of you over the Christmas break and the New Year transition into 2025 who are looking at your data on the cloud or looking at your data on a slightly aging server solution, you're thinking, do you know what? This year might be the time for the upgrade. And that's what this video is about. There's going to be loads of network attached storage solutions in both hardware and I would argue software innovations this year, many of which we've already discussed. And this video is about the ones you need to keep an eye on. I'm going to go through five main solutions. That I think right now we're going to be heavy hitters in 2025. But before we get into them, just a quick one. A number of you are going to be wondering about two of the biggest names in NAS, Synology and QNAP, and what their plans are. So I thought I'd front load this video to, to say straight away, firstly with Synology. Synology seems to be really doubling down right now on the promotion and innovation within their Active Protect series, their new DP line of tailored specific backup appliances. However, I have seen indications that there is definitely, definitely not only going to be that new B station solution, but there's also going to be a new two and four bay solution into that 2025 slash 2026 series there. So that is something that almost certainly is going to be landing in late Q2 and early Q3. But unfortunately, not enough concrete information to actually share here on the channel. But I've seen more than enough indications and conversation we've had in the background here on the channel to indicate that. The same goes for QNAP. It does look like a number of solutions are going to be seeing upgrades later this year. But unfortunately, with nothing concrete and nothing official from the brands, I can't really include them in this video. But I just wanted to touch on those here before we got into the main five solutions to look out for in 2025. Minis Forum have really been accelerating their brand name there in the world of mini PCs and now network attached storage. When they revealed they were working on a NAS solution, they did not leave anyone disappointed. The new N5 Pro revealed at CES 2025 is a real doozy. It is a 12 core AMD and that's an AI Ryzen powered CPU there with um, four power cores and eight efficiency cores. This system has got it all. It's got ECC memory up to uh, 96 gigabyte there. It's a five SATA and three M.2 Gen 4 M.2 NVMe system. It's got a PCIe upgrade slot. It's got 10 GB. It's got five GB. It's even got Oculink there on the rear. Now it's arriving with a standard Windows license, which no one really cares about. Out. But it also arrives with support of third-party NAS operating systems, your true NAS, your um, Unraid, your Open Media Vault, and more, or run it as a particularly sophisticated Proxmox VM server. I would say of all the solutions I'm going to talk about today, this is the one that has made the loudest splash. And although there was no clear indication of launch pricing and release, I'm willing to bet this is going to be another Q2 release. Also, the N5 Pro is going to represent one of three separate network attached storage solutions from the brand, or at least what the brand has told me at CES. And I would say of all the um, solutions I'm going to talk about here in this video to watch out for and keep an eye on in 2025, the Minis Forum N5 Pro is probably one of the best. Now, you may not have heard of the brand Icewell, but a number of you may have heard about solutions they've worked on and launched in the last few years. The Zimmer Blade, the Zimmer Board, and the Zimmer Cube. Three very specific NAS turnkey solutions that not only arrive with tremendous flexibility in their uh, capacity and scalability, but also arrive with their own software in the form of Casa OS and Zimmer OS. Now, they're not sitting down for the rest of 2025. They are launching a new Zimmer Board solution, the Zimmer Board 2. Now, this is rocking out with an Intel N-series processor. It's rocking out with more memory, more storage, and greater network uh, connectivity than the previous generation Zimmer Blade and Zimmer Board. The Zimmer, uh, the Zimmer Board 2 is run with 2 times 2.5 GBE network connectivity a PCIe um, upgrade slot located on the outside USB-C power uh, input there and that end series although not confirmed whether it's going to be the newer or older generation uh, series so that's the Alder Lake or the Twin Lake I will say that chances are if it's anything like their previous releases they'll release it in a two choice series no doubt with the N100 at the very least but likely the N305 as well. No 10 GBE here, but with a scale up of that storage, scale up of memory, and just a scale up in every regard, 
the Zimmer Border and Zimmer Blade were tremendous home lab and DIY solutions that you could run parallel to a lower powered but higher capacity NAS and give you the best of both worlds. And thanks to their Intel N being an exceptionally efficient CPU, I think there's a lot of scalability. We're still waiting for kind of confirmation whether it is going to be Zimmer OS or Casa OS, but nevertheless, I've always been a big fan of these little DIY custom boards. And if you're looking for a much more customizable but small footprint NAS, the Zimmer Board 2 may well be the one for you. Switching away from that more modest solution that we talked about from Icewell, we can talk about Ugreen and their continued expansion into the world of NAS with the IDX 6011 Pro. This is an insanely OP NAS. Now, I'm going to front end this straight away by saying they are heavily heavily marketing the AI capabilities of this system. But one, they are optional, and two, I think a lot of users just don't care about it, so keep that in mind. I'd say the hardware on this system alone is what really stands out. It's one of the earliest NASes that I've seen and have my hands on that arrived with that Intel Ultra Core processor, the 1258. This is a 14 core processor with 2.2 gigahertz integrated graphics on board if needed, with 18 threads to play with and an astonishing 28 lanes of Gen 4 and Gen 5 PCIe to spread across the system. That is an enormous amount to work with in terms of raw resources across the rest of the system, and they've really eaten out dual 10 GBE connectivity, an Oculink external port there. It even has USB 4, two ports to play with as well. Arriving with six hard drive bays and at least two M.2 NVMe bays, although that seems to be not really classified at this time. There's a pro and a non-pro version of this system. There's an LCD touchscreen on the front for those that care. And although Ugreen's NAS operating system has got better, it's still, I would argue, not as good as many other options in the market. Luckily, much like the Minis Forum solution we just talked about, they support third-party operating systems on their system without uh, the invalidation of that hardware warranty. Bottom line, Ugreen are definitely going even heavier into their NAS solutions with promises towards further upgrade to their NAS lineup towards Q3 and Q4 of 2025. Next up, LinkStation. I talked about them a few weeks ago, but it's worth highlighting again that LinkStation, who produced that lovely little 4 NVMe and 2 SATA compact NAS system with Unraid on board, are expanding towards two new NAS solutions, the N2 and the S1. The N2 is a refresh of the existing N1, so it now arrives with an M100 processor with 10 GPE on board, and it arrives with that Unraid license still there. It's largely the same system, but with an improved CPU you inside to get the job done over that of the seller on that came before and it will result in much greater performance i would argue now the s1 is a four bay sata and two times nvme desktop system arriving with the intel n97 so still an order lake processor it doesn't have 10 gbe or a pcie upgrade which isn't great um, but i will say as a four bay solution if they nail down that price and once again as a turnkey unraid solution both of these are great little boxes to keep an eye on in 2025. Um, there's no confirmation at this time whether they're going to go pure crowdfunding or not on these, but I would say with both of these, they are going to be very competitive against any QNAP or Synology that's going to come to market, thanks to that collaboration with Unraid on this. Now, this last one may seem a bit airy-fairy and vague, but hear me out. And that is, have you been keeping an eye on those MITX motherboards, little combo NAS boards coming out that arrive with, you know, a mobile server-ready CPU pre-attached in a combination with the motherboard? Well, this year you're going to see a lot more of the newer generation Twin Lake processor ready ones. These are arriving with the Intel N1254 core processor and the N355 i3 8 core processor. Highly efficient, same number of lanes as that of the Alder Lake N100 and N305 that came before it, but a slightly higher clock speed and a high efficiency there. So if you are looking at DIY right now, and you're looking at modest DIY, again, keyword modest, maybe hold out a little bit longer because we're going to start to see a better class of CPU on there, a more modern class of CPU at the very least, although the upgrades are only fractional there. And 
we're also going to see innovations within those systems towards the motherboard creation. I'm already talking to a brand right now about a dual 10GBE N100 and N305 motherboard. Not one 10GBE, but dual 10GBE ready ITX motherboard with these very efficient processors. And they're already working on the N125 and the N355 versions of that motherboard, perhaps even skipping the N100. Bottom line, what I'm saying is, if you're looking at DIY right now and you're looking at Modest, you may have been considering the N100 and the N305 motherboards from the likes of CWWK, Topton, and more. I would say hold out because the N125 and the N355 variations of those boards from those brands and others are imminent. We're talking Q1 2025, and for a DIY Modest NAS build, they're going to be great. And that's really it. There are a bunch of other solutions in the pipeline right now, but many of which are still awaiting true confirmation. And therefore, I don't really want to talk about it. And these five are all confirmed for 2025 in one shape or form, and no doubt are going to splinter into different variations. And let's not overlook that Synology and QNAP are choosing this year to refresh a number of their kind of prosumer SMB solutions. So stay tuned for those. Ultimately, we're going to be covering all here on the channel this year and comparing them as the name of the site suggests. But what do you guys think? Is there something I've missed? Perhaps something that everyone needs to keep an eye on that I didn't include in the list? That's what the comments are for. Let me know. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.